Okay, the Linux rat is back and he's eating his cheese. <laughs> I just put the master password in and press next. And I will finish. Now this, I don't know if it's just GNOME or what, but for the love of God, it never happened to me in KDE. Every time I get into this thing, it says it wants to restart the computer. What's doing is doing a fake restart of the computer. It stops. I've never had that problem in KDE, at least KDE 3.5. I've had it numerous times today, so I'm having apps not necessarily show up on the uh, on the desktop. Now, why do I have two of these Adobe's? Hmm. Okay. Now, I was supposed to have had the PPC icon show up on my desktop. I may have to use the method I showed you showed you earlier to get um, the icon where I want it. Some of it. There's little things to do once they're there. They, you know, the icons aren't really going to go away, and they can be dealt with if they're gone. Just like in Windows. Keep that in mind. You know, this is a little bit annoying here. Yeah, and I use a new bottle called PPC. There it is. I will browse and it'll put me in there. Program files, practice new pump, PPC library, reference library, config. What are you doing there? I gotta look around and figure out where the heck that is. I got so many bottles, I don't know what to do with them. And again, we got this damn show hidden files. Shuttleworth, if you're listening, change it. Okay. Um, PPC, C drive, program files. Now, somewhere in here, I would expect to find the binary. Now, why don't I have a freaking binary there? This is going to be a real problem. I'm, I might have to put KDE in here just to get this thing uh, work right. I, I, I'm just, um, man. <laughs> Is it not showing stuff? Is it? No, they're showing hidden files. So what's the deal? I guess it's not really. Uh, it's not installing completely. I've never had this problem with PPC. You know, this has happened a couple times right, where I may have had success. I may have had success in a later version of Caseware if it weren't for this part of the whole thing. And I, th I really do think the. Something's wrong with GNOME. I don't know. Well, there you have it. The application that would be, but it never was. <laughs> Is it in there? No. Son of a gun. Well, trust me, it works. Have a good day. <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk about money, or at least potential. Depending on the size of your accounting firm, no matter what your accounting firm is, whether you're a one-man show or, or you're larger, you're going to have, um, okay, again, okay, we have a situation where we have potential, right? We, we, we do have the ability to install to various degrees different apps. LACERT has, has uh, less ability to do so, but... If uh, LaCert were to decide to, to make their Linux version install a little bit differently and just place the files the way they, sh they should end up, you know, DVD has four gigabytes of space. They could probably just have it just copy the files down to where they belong in the end, provided you have your install key. Um, otherwise, somehow encrypt the DVD. I don't know. I'm sure the engineering can figure some way, figure out some way to get it to work. Okay, and then we got all these other apps. We have um, a very distinct possibility that Windows 2000, uh, Office 2007 will work fine. We have a very distinct possibility that uh, we supports Quicken all the way up to 2010. We, you know, and I guess with a little more work or with uh, massive manpower, you know. I mean, if we're able to 
plow into Europe and rip rip it out of Nazi hands in World War II, I'm sure that some you know more concentrated effort. This is this is with the accounting industry doing absolutely nothing at all to help this along, getting this and we're this far. Now, if we just put a little bit of effort into it, we work together a little bit, and we encourage some people to actually uh, try to get caseware to get it to run in uh, wine from their end to find out what they can do to change it to get it to work right or what differences they can make or what they can tell the people over a wine you know what, what they need to get it to run um, you know, at the wine project or at code weavers we would actually have a choice and why do we care about having a choice well let's talk about money we, we do have a choice when it comes to running a server and behind me I have a I don't run a Windows server, I run a Samba server. You can have passwords if you want. You cannot have passwords if you want. You can, um, so you can have, you'll have a secure environment. Um, probably more secure from the point of being like hacked from the outside, but you know, that's, all, that's an invisible threat that could be blown out of proportion. So, you know, we'll, we'll leave that off the table. We'll just stick to cost and the cost of my, production Samba server, at least the software on it was the cost of a Linux magazine, $20 Linux magazine that had a, a, a DVD in it. It was called, it's called The Best of Linux. I think I have it over here on the last remaining CDs that are in my case. There are uh, current programs. Hold on a second. Bastard, right there. Best of Linux. I got that at uh, Micro Center in uh, off of uh, San off of the San Tomas exit. Well, anyway, I'll probably able to find that somewhere or order it over the internet somewhere. Or look it up or whatever. Google it, my friend. Uh, I was able to install that, and I have a configuration file that I've been using for 10 years, and I copied the one I already had. Prepared. This is the reason why I use the work group, Mandrake group, because I'm lazy. <laughs> I just pop that into place, make sure the Samba service is running, and choose a mount point, and we're in business. You know, I just got to copy the files over. We're in business. We, and there, there you go. That's all there is to it. Uh, I might do a presentation on setting it up, but it isn't a big deal if you know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you can tear your hair out for weeks. So, um, and I have it set up in a very, very simple way. Um, one, because I did it when I was learning, and two, uh, for the practicality of the whole situation, um, uh, someone's going to have to bust down and ram, ram down our doors or, you know, and make a big ruckus to get in here and then just, you know, to steal our stuff, and then what are they going to do with it? It's on a very odd file system that unless they knew something about something, they would be able to even access the files. Um, most people don't, and, and then they need the programs to, to run and look at the data in there, so we've got so many levels of security. Um, that it's almost pointless to have our own users that we trust anyway log in. Okay, so we, anyway, we, we do have the situation. We're, we're very close uh, to being able to do an awful lot of things in, and to have a choice. And I think being able to have that, have that choice is important. And think about the licensing at each desk. You have your, your software behind you. You have each desk that you have to pay for. And depending on the size of your firm and the ability to de deploy these apps fairly easily by just copy copying a .cx office directory and plopping it in on the other computer, it sounds like if you can do this fairly easily and things are stable, it, it may be a very good solution. Now I'll go into some of the downsides and uh, I'll stop here.